Hey! Let's take a look at a lens that is epically awesome. It's a must-have uh, for your Nikon, and I do not say that lightly. Um, if you actually go through the thousand plus videos, the actually the number of lenses that I say are must-own and epic are extremely few. Um, it totals about eight or less. Um, and this is one of those. Tamron was rolling through town a few months ago, and I had uh, X number of minutes to use this, and uh, I knew exactly what it was then. Um, however, it needed further testing. I've now since tested it on the Nikon uh, D3 here, the D810, the D750, various uh, hard lighting situations. This lens is like that epic moment when the kid from that movie finds a Red Ryder BB rifle underneath the Christmas tree finally. That moment when uh, the first girlfriend you had when you were younger said, yeah, let's do have sex. <laughs> and then um, a couple weeks later when she called you up and said that, yeah, I'm not pregnant, you know. <laughs> One of those really awesome moments that... You know, that kind of roll around that gives you one of those feelings like, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is it. Um, this is, uh, now this is not what Tamron has specifically said that is designed to kill the Sigma uh, art lenses, uh, but that's exactly what it's designed for. Let's go down some of its criteria, uh, attributes, characteristics, and then uh, I'll tell you why this is uh, an epic deal. Um, now, the term art, before getting into this awesome lens, this is the, the, the Tamron SP 45mm f1.8 DIVC USD ultrasonic drive vibration control. This does have vibration control, which the art lens does not. But what you cannot see, and uh, I know, well, this is an arrogant claim, but I'm the god of lenses here on YouTube, especially for Nikon, okay? Deny it, you cannot. What you cannot see that this lens has versus if I had the Sigma 50mm art lens here, the term art of course is meaningless, it is nothing other than hype. Art lenses are actually the hype of uh, the lens world, of the camera world. They're exactly like Beats headphones. If you actually ask any professional audiophile, and I mean a true professional audiophile, they laugh their ass off when you mention Beats headphones. People, those people do not use those, they use Audio-Technicas and they use Sonys. Uh, the only people that are actually buying the expensive Beats headphones are dummies that are constantly bombarded by ads. And that's how Sigma actually sells those horrible lenses. And what you cannot see here versus the Sigma art lens, feeling it, touching it, sniffing it, which of course I'm not going to sniff gear, that is pathetically stupid. Unless it's like a used camera, and then you actually should sniff it, but you're sniffing for smoke to tell whether or not someone's a cigarette smoker, in which case you don't buy the camera, so. And that's one actual instance where it's valid. But what you cannot see, getting to the point here, is quality of construction, sample variation, customer service, the fact that this actually has a reliable aperture assembly in it, unlike the Sigmas, which are not weather sealed, uh, constantly come up decentered. Um, you can ask any camera store man manager that's been working on the job for more than 10 years, like, what's the lens that's always coming back to be returned? And they'll, oh, it's Sigma. Yes, Sigma. And, oh, what about those expensive art lenses? Oh, yeah, those, those come back. You know, those are the ones that actually come back quite frequently. They're not good lenses. They are not. They're not good lenses. They just aren't. They're incredibly hardcore hyped. But, uh, you know, we know the Lamborghinis, Porsches, and uh, BMWs, uh, and some other stuff. Uh, Rolls Royces are the best stuff that's out there, but you're not going to see TV commercials on them, really, because the good stuff sells itself. Um, anyway, on the set, the Tamron 45mm here, which is absolutely incredible. It's an epic must-own lens. What are its characteristics? And I'll go over uh, some of the things or qualms that people have had about it, which are really... Uh, you know, really nonsense, and there's only a couple, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, this lens is uh, also a pseudo macro, as I like to call it. The closest focusing distance is 11.4 inches, and uh, it's an awesome lens. This is an all metal body. Um, focusing with this is absolutely exquisite. I actually compare it to focusing a Voigtland or a Zeiss lens. Um, you have vibra vibration control here on the side on switch number one, switch number two. You have a switch between autofocus and manual. It's ten elements in eleven groups. It's a nine-bladed uh, round aperture. Um, 
The bokeh balls off of this thing are incredibly round and uh, perfect and blurry. This actually, Tamron designed this to be exactly what it's supposed to be, which is a creamy, a beautiful foreground and background out of focus lens that is absolutely amazing. Now what is mind-blowing about this lens is it blows, I keep trying to compare it to the Sigma Art, which of course is a lot more expensive than this, it is nowhere near as sharp, nowhere near good at color saturation. This lens has incredible sharpness. It is just sharp as hell. It's so sharp it'll cut you. It is damn sharp. The color saturation is incredible. It's got phenomenal micro contrast, which is very important for doing those creamy, rich black and white conversions uh, for portraiture or uh, you know street whatnot this is a normal lens you think well 45 millimeter well 45 millimeter really is a normal lens on uh, focal length um for full frame but also so for dx this is a perfect portrait lens for dx so which which camera is this ideal for full frame or dx and the answer is yes the answer is both to both of those if Sigma is going to call their pathetic little lenses art lenses, which doesn't mean anything, a child's finger painting is art, denotatively, then uh, I'm going to call this what Tamron doesn't call it. I'm going to call it the Da Vinci series. Okay? If those junky lenses from Sigma are art, then this is the Da Vinci lens. Flat out, bar none. Okay, no hype. Tamron isn't giving me a damn nickel to plug this lens. Okay, you know I'll call it like I see it. If it's crap, it's crap. Um... Image stabilization, which the Sigma Art does not have, it means you could do some really nice low shutter speed handheld stuff. Um, image stabilization on this is incredibly good. It's marked, I love the way the fact that they marked it twice, really, which is kind of unusual, but it means they're proud of it. It's marked designed in Japan, and a lot of stuff that's marked that way, there are some things that say it's designed in Japan, but it's made somewhere else. This is also made in Japan. It's designed in Japan and also marked made in Japan. They're incredibly proud of the design and the fact that it is constructed, and even a blind person that knows lenses could actually feel that this is made in Japan, not in China. 67 uh, millimeter uh, front filter, 498 grams. Some people actually said this is a lightweight lens. It is definitely not a lightweight lens. Um, another thing like this, exactly like the Zeiss, you can actually see the screw heads in here, unlike a lot of other cheap filters, which include all Nikon. Um, excuse me, all uh, lens hoods, all uh, Nikon uh, lens hoods is that uh, they're single piece with uh, very tiny, very thin pieces of plastic. They're famous for breaking. This is actually a double piece uh, lens, uh, lens hood that's actually screwed together so it's not going to break real cheap like as typified by 98% of other lens hoods. Well, it is all plastic. It is like a Zeiss-like lens hood uh, construction, which means that it's not going to snap and break apart uh, like uh, the Nikon and the, uh, the Canon lens hoods are. Um, yeah, metal barrel. Um, superior, near perfect manually focusing with this, um, with the rubber ring. Um, what are some of the attributes of this particular lens and its output? And I'm going to start putting up some sample pictures. I've been testing bokeh and whatnot using uh, some of my uh, uh, Christmas lights behind me and uh, hardcore lighting situations for flare. Um, using with the Nikon D3, D810, and uh, uh, D750. Um, it's incredibly damn sharp. The color saturation on it is off the scale. Uh, far, far superior corner to corner in vignetting than the Sigma Art. Far, far superior. Um, as I mentioned, a superior two piece uh, lens hood construction rather than single piece cast. Which means it's not going to break, as is typified by all the rest of the lens hoods. Um, incredible micro contrast, perfect for making black and white portraits. Uh, fluorine coated front element uh, for smudge and finger resistance. Uh, I'm actually not going to put a, uh, a prophylactic or protective uh, air coated front filter on this one. Probably will not. Um, weather resistant construction. And like I said, this is perfect for DX or uh, FX use. This is a perfect lens for portraiture or normal use. Yes, 45 millimeter full frame or DX lies within that normal range there. I know the equivalent uh, crop factor um, uh, on this lens is uh, like uh, 68 millimeters on a DX. Still perfect lens for portraiture. It's as useful on a DX camera as it is on a full frame. There really is no argument there. That's not my subjective premise. Um, dreamy, buttery. 
designed that way by Tamron. Uh, pastel foregrounds and backgrounds. If you've actually got a, a subject sandwich between some like trees overhanging in the foreground or some nice bulk in the back, depending on what sort of uh, depth, out of depth of field uh, uh, imagery you have in your composition, this renders uh, that out of focus um, composition beautifully, creamily. It is exactly, exactly what people asked for, and it does a far, far better job for a lot less money than the crappy, poorly made. Uh, poor uh, quality control, poor sample construction of the Sigma Art lens. This lens is $600, not on sale currently, the 45mm. Um, this lens also has another unique characteristic that the Sigma Art does not have, and that most lenses also do not have, is that this lens is really bulletproof against flare. It renders uh, a potential uh, sun flares and light flares dreamily and pastel. I can almost call this an impressionistic lens as far as how it renders flare and uh, out of focus foreground and background. It is, uh, it is exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. Uh, I actually put it right up there near the 85mm uh, uh, Zeiss. Um, that I have a couple of uh, so far as uh, how creamy and beautiful, and also the lens I have over there, which is the hundred, the number one king of all bokeh, the 105 millimeter f2 DC Nikkor, which is a $1,200 lens, my favorite, basically the the god lens of all portrait lenses uh, over there. It is right at the 105 millimeter f2 DC Nikkor. I was actually doing side by side testing today on that. The lens is right behind the camera over there. Um, there are only two complaints about this lens, and uh, they're both uh, invalid BS. And why? Um, first thing is if you have some uh, hardcore uh, illumination that's outside of uh, outside of the dynamic range of what you're exposing for, like a really heavy, brightly illuminated white area, and everything else is about six or six or five stops uh, off of that one way or the other. Um, then you'll get a little bit of purple fringing. Now, every expensive, super expensive Zeiss lens that I've got, uh, so far as what is comparatively, uh, for example, uh, compared to, you know, uh, some of my $1,500, $2,000 Zeiss lenses, how is it equivalent on purple fringing? Well, it's a lot less than every Zeiss lens that I've got. Um, it's even less than the 105mm F2 DC Nikkor, which is the king of all portrait lenses. And uh, this steps right up to it at $600. Uh, superior construction to that uh, F2, uh, F2 105mm autofocus D-series Nikkor for $1,200. Twice as much money, by the way. Um, so, here, and the other complaint is, is that, and this one's valid, but I'm going to tell you why it's BS. Uh, this lens is not meant to be a sports and action lens. It's meant for portraiture, you know, the dog or the pet. Um, you know, going outside framing uh, the family, the kids, uh, you know, a scene, a street use. Um, it does not have extremely fast autofocus, but that doesn't mean a damn thing. That's like, you know, a, you know, some rich moron that buys a Lamborghini that complains about it being crappy driving down to the corner grocery store to grab some milk. Uh, a Lamborghini, as is uh, irrefutably the case, is a pathetic, crappy car when you're driving at 20 miles an hour or less. I mean, that thing is designed to just uh, blaze hell down the freeway and, and impress the hell out of everybody, and that's exactly what the hell it does. It is a top performer. It's not meant for idling and puttering at 5 and 10 miles an hour. This lens is not designed, okay, for, you know, shooting the racetrack as the cars go by or the horses as they come by. Or, you know, uh, the, uh, the caffeinated dog as it's, you know, running around in circles chasing his tail. The autofocus on this actually is faster, and I did some speed comparisons because this is one valid point against this lens, but it is invalid. I mean, there is no perfect lens out there. You know I've owned thousands of lenses. Um, I've personally owned um, that many, but I've had a lot more pass through my hands. And there is no perfect lens. It doesn't matter how damn expensive it is, so... Defaulting the Tamron and the one thing that people will bitch about about this lens, and it is invalid, it's still faster than that super expensive portrait lens over there, the 105mm f2 uh, DC Nikkor. So, well, it's not super fast, not a focus. Well, it's not designed to be. And that's not what its intended use is, for Christ's sake. If you're buying this lens to shoot the race cars as they're coming around the track, or to shoot uh, your rabid dog that you know, like twitches around and you know, you, you want to you know, kick the dog, it's you know, one of those. 
You ever try to capture those animals that are constantly flitting around like a squirrel on crack? This lens is not designed for capturing that. Uh, the autofocus is plenty fast. Is it super fast? Kind of like if someone has like a Tamron 70 to 200 2.8 VC lens, which is designed for sports and action, a $1,500 uh, fast telephoto lens. No, it is not that damn fast. So that's a valid point, but it is also 100% invalid. Invalid. Uh, the quality, fit, and finish, and construction on this lens is absolutely exquisite. Check out video number two. Um, nobody's actually ever shown a close-up of this lens. I'd like to show you a close-up of it. And uh, it's uh, physical attributes close-up instead of from five feet away as you're looking at it now. Um, even though I've done endless lens reviews, um, in the totality of things, I could actually say there are very few lenses that I could call a must-own, actually, when I knew that I tried this lens after Tamron rolled into town. Tamron is ready to, not ready, they are. Sigma is quaking in their boots. Um, the 15, I've got no connection to Tamron, okay? They're not buttering my, buttering my bread. They're not giving me a damn thing. Um, the 70 to 200, 2.8 VC, which even beats the Nikkor, 70 to 200. The lens of the year for me, unquestionably, which just blew my mind, was the Tamron 15 to 30, 2.8. And this is the lens that is going to destroy Sigma. They should have named this lens something in spite of the, the nonsense that Sigma does. Oh, we, this is the art lens. The art, mean, art, art means nothing. It's nothing other than marketing hype. But Tamron went the professional route and decided to let this lens slowly start to chirping for itself. And just like a Lamborghini or a Porsche or a Rolls Royce does, you don't see advertisements on the TV for that stuff. Because the good crap sells itself, and this is exactly what the hell this is. And um, I, while I only had about 15 minutes or so with this lens a few months ago when Tamron rolled through town, I knew, you know, I had plenty enough lens experience from then to determine after that amount of use that this lens, I was going to get it. I should have actually got it sooner. It's actually been hard to get until now. I hear parts of Europe, uh, they're actually selling this for a premium over what it's supposed to cost because it's hard to get. Um, as soon, by the way, too, a couple, uh, renowned places, uh, uh, I won't mention, because one of them I don't particularly like, but they're really big, and they, they just came out with a news report, and it was over on, uh, NikonRubers.com, that basically, in their own words, they said that this lens is the tits. They didn't say that, that's my terminology for basically what they basically said. And they're damn right. It is. It, it's sharp as hell. It blows the Sigma away in every way, shape, and form. It's cheaper. It's better. It's got vibration control, better quality construction, better bokeh, better bokeh balls, better quarter to corner, far, far, far sharper, better color saturation for a lot less money. There is nothing that the Sigma can compare to this one. If you split, plan on spending $1,000 on that, that uh, you know, poor sample variation, poorly constructed piece of junk, um, that costs a lot more than this exquisite lens, which is far, 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 far better, uh, then you're smoking something illegal. This is a must-own lens, and it is absolutely the super tits. It is incredible. This lens is going to get my triple S, uh, triple B rating, which is uh, silk, sex, and sugar, and uh, blurry bokeh balls. <laughs> it, it, this lens really is incredible. So, bravo to Tamron. This is... Uh, this is uh, like if uh, Zeiss made a new line of lenses, and, uh, and of course Zeiss doesn't, you know, they're not autofocus lenses. This is an autofocus. Theirs are manual focus. This would kind of be it. <laughs> it's awesome. It really is. I do not over-exaggerate that point. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. And if you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Go tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you the most happy. But this lens is the tits. Tamron, you're awesome. You really rocked it out with this one. Epic winner on you. <laughs> Yee, Tamron. You go, Tamron. You, you won. You won this one. Sigma is going to be uh, is gonna be rolling in their grave soon over this stuff. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.